Hello, welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for government. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, post-UTME, WASE, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Calbipedia, BESE, JSCE, NCEE, NECO, ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. In today's topic, we are going to look at the different ways of organizing and running a political system or concepts used to describe the various ways of organizing political systems and even organizations, even the family. One is, the topic is centralization and decentralization. Now, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to state the meaning of centralization, the advantages of centralization, explain the disadvantages of centralization, state the meaning of decentralization, state the forms of decentralization, highlight the advantages of decentralization and the disadvantages of decentralization. Now, what is the meaning of centralization? Now, centralization is a political process or administrative system whereby political authority and powers existing in a state is located in one central decision-making body. So it is the concentration of power in a single authority. Actually, we are describing what is obtainable in a unitary system of government where the power, all political powers, the power, the decision-making powers are located in one central body. And it's from that central body that other powers derive, is any other component derives its power. So in, in this case, powers are not shared between any level of authority and the other. Rather, it is concentrated in one single authority, located in one single authority, and it is from that single authority that powers can flow from. So that is centralization, to centralize, to concentrate it in one single authority. And it is obtainable in every unitary system. In a unitary system, you see that it is a system of government where governmental powers are concentrated in one single authority. Even in administration, there are people that run centralized administration in various organizations. Now, this is where maybe the employer or the owner of that or the founder can concentrate all the powers, all decision-making powers in his or herself. It is from him or the, herself that other powers can come from. So that is about centralization. Now, we ha also have what we call, let's look at the advantages of uh, centralization. One, it is cheaper to operate because, especially in government, you see that all powers are concentrated in one single central authority in where you have a centralization and therefore in maintaining, you maintain only that single authority. So it makes it cheaper the, uh, uh, um, when compared to when you um, share these powers in different units and still maintain all the units. So it is cheaper to operate, that's why some people operate centralized system. Also, it's, there is effective control of local areas by the central authority because powers and authorities of local areas are actually coming from the central government. And the central government actually has the right actually to take back the powers they have accorded to the local authority. So they can effectively control the local authority since the local authority when you create them, or the local areas, local government, when you create them under a decentralized system, they derive their powers and they are answerable to the central government. Also, <coughs> there is uniform citizenship as in a unitary system of government. You see uniformity in citizenship because citizens owe their allegiance to one central authority. Now, there is quick decision making. Example, in a family, 
when you have, uh, let's say, a, a centralized system where maybe either the father or the mother, the authorities come in only from one particular person, the person can easily take decisions. If you come to organizations where employers concentrate all powers in his or herself, you see, they speak the, whatever it decides, that is final. The same thing applies to government. When the government decides to centralize power, you see that decisions will come from that power, that source of power, and they can quickly make their decisions. So there's quick decision making. That is why some organizations, some states will decide to centralize political power. Also, there's strong national government since all powers are concentrated in a single central authority. What we mean by this is that a government that enjoys a centralized power is usually very strong because it commands a lot of power and serves as a source of authority to even other um, authorities and the state because you derive the author your authority from that central government. So it makes a government very strong, the national government. Now there's no conflict of authority in a centralized administration. There is no conflict of authority because you can't question and be, uh, the central authority because you derive your power from the central authority. So we don't have any conflict of authority. Also, centralized administration unifies the people. It brings the people better together whenever you have a centralized author, um, administration. Now, the disadvantage is one, it's only effective in a small and homogeneous society small that is where it will be effective because it means that the central government can actually oversee everything so it works better in a small circle and also in a homogeneous society where you have one kind of ethnic group one particular ethnic group making up that state it works better even in organizations it works better when you have just a small organization but where you have an organization that have branches all over the country of course you shouldn't centralize the power you have each unit to have some level of autonomy. Also, <clears throat> there is domination of the system by oligarchs. So few persons, few elites dominate the political system where you centralize power. Also, there is concentration of state investments and activities to the metropolis, that is the central, that is the capital state, and few other uh, peculiar or particular areas of interest to the ruling class. You see that there's discrimination of uh, investments and the uh, developmental projects of the country or state. You see that they concentrate in, in big towns and the metropolis. Also, there's dictatorship <coughs> because of centralization of power. Because the, really, um, the government is centralized and there's one source of authority. Of course, that source of authority tends to be more dictatorial because no other authority can question it. Also, it cannot accommodate every interest group on the system. No, it cannot accommodate it because it's not very representative in nature. Then, <clears throat> the constitution can be easily manipulated because constitution of a centralized system, like a unitary system of government, is usually flexible. That is, can be amended easily. And that can lead to manipulation by the government in power because they can quickly manipulate it, amend it to suit their interest. So these are the disadvantages or problems associated with centralization of authority. Now let's look at the meaning of decentralization, which is the opposite of a centralized system, that's centralization. Now, decentralization is a political arrangement or administrative system where political powers are shared between the central government and the component units. So you see that you have levels of government, the central government and the component unit. That is what is obtainable when you are talking about a central, a federal system of government, where you see the federal government, you see the state government, that's levels of government. We also define it as a political administrative arrangement that involves sharing of powers into the central government and other component unit. <clears throat> Even in organization, other than the state, you also see some decentralization, especially organizations that have branches all over the country. You see that some level of autonomy are accorded to every branch.
to manage their affairs in their own ways. That is decentralized system. So you give them some level of powers to actually manage their affairs. So in a state, we also have that decentralized system where there is division of powers between the central government and the component units. And in most cases, especially in a federal system of government, they derive their powers rather from the constitution. Now, let's look at the forms of decentralization. There are two major forms of decentralization. One is what we call devolution. Now, devolution is what we call the transfer of power. This time, power from the central government to the component units. That is when the central government transfers decision-making power to local government, to the local authorities. So it means that it has given them power to make decisions in areas that affect them. So in this system, you can have a situation where the central government can create regions, have the power to create regions and give them power, transfer power to them to make decisions in the affairs that affect them in carrying out their duties. So it's usually found in a unitary state. And the powers of the and the power of the company units emanate from the central government. A good example you see it in Britain, where the central government transfers power to local authorities. And that local authorities now gain autonomy to make some decisions in areas that affect the local people that they manage. Some public, um, local authorities providing essential services and this system can be given such power to actually make decisions that affect them in carrying out their duties. So that is transfer of power, transfer of um, political power, transfer of decision making power. That's what we're talking about in devolution of power. Now the second one is what we call the concentration. Now the concentration is transfer of administrative or supervisory power to local authority. In this case, <clears throat> the central government is not given decision making power to these local authorities when they disconcentrate. Rather, what they give is administrative power, powers to actually implement decisions. So the power to make decision in the system where you disconcentrate it still, uh, still lies with the central government. But here, the local authorities or the company units that the central government is giving that power, the central government will make decisions and now make the local authorities to implement these decisions on behalf of the central government. So the local authorities in this case, they don't have powers to make decisions. So what they are doing rather is to actually implement the decisions of the central government that transfers administrative or supervisory power to it. So you see, the difference between devolution and deconcentration is that while in devolution of power, the central government transfers power, the power to make decisions to local authorities. While in deconcentration, the central government transfers administrative or um, supervisory powers and still reserves the power to actually make decisions why the local authorities in the concentrated system will only carry out the decisions made by the central authority. So this is the difference between the two of them. Now let's look at the advantages of decentralization. One, it increases local participation, especially in the local areas, since some level of autonomy has been granted to uh, the local area. So citizens or people in that local areas can actually take part in local affairs, in making decisions, in contesting for elections in their local areas. Also, it's well adapted for large and heterogeneous population. In a federal system, of, I mean, uh, in a population where you have a heterogeneous population, it's better you decentralized. You decentralize the system for the local people to actually take part and manage their affairs in their own way so that no one will feel marginalized. Also, there is even allocation of resources and development in a decentralized system because every system, that every unit we have, um, you know, we derive its own revenue from the central government and actually use it to develop the local areas. So you see that in most cases, 
some areas are not marginalized. So it reduces ethnic domination in a central, decentralized society. Now, people don't feel, okay, this particular ethnic group is dominating the polity because they have their own government that they run in their own way. Also, it reduces the workload of the central government, therefore increasing its efficiency. What we mean by this is that the federal government or the central government in a decentralized system becomes more effective because some of the workloads and some of its responsibilities have been shifted to the local authorities. And it brings the government closer to the people because you have created local authorities, powers are decentralized, we have levels of government, and the people are closer, can reach and feel their government. Now, we, uh, the disadvantages of uh, decentralization. One, decentralized system is very, very expensive to operate. Why is it very expensive to operate? It's because we have levels of government and each level is to be actually maintained by the resources of the country. So in Nigeria, you see you have the central government, you have the state government, and offices are duplicated in all the levels of government, including the arms of government. So in maintaining these agencies in the parastatas and offices and arms of government, at every level of government, you see the government becoming very expensive. Also, there is delay in decision making. That's because each level derives its power, in most cases, especially in, central gov in a federal government, from the constitution. And the law will provide that in some cases, all the levels of government, especially central government and state government, must be involved in making some decisions. So such consultation can lead to delay in decision making. Also, there is a tendency for the center to become weak since the constituents are autonomous. Yes, the tendency for the central government to be weak is there because the units, the state governments are autonomous. They have some levels of autonomy, areas that the central government has no power to delve into. Also, there is problem of double loyalty or loyalty to the national government by the citizens because citizens are loyal to both the central government and the component units. So at times, the central government faced this problem of the kind of or weak loyalty from the citizens to their central government. Then there's unhealthy rivalry among the component units. Unhealthy rivalry. Then we have problem of dual loyalty. So these are the major disadvantages of a decentralized system. Now, let's take a practice at um, exam, exam guide using the SSCE. Now for the year, we select at random topics of interest. We can go for federalism, we can go for elements and systems of government. That's where we can see related uh, questions. Now, <coughs> a system of government where the component units are sovereign, actually we're talking about the confederal system of government. Now. Confedera Confederation was once practiced in Senegal and Gambia. Now, um, now, a federal system of government, education and health are examples of, of course, concurrent both the central government and the component units. Now, an advantage of, okay, this confederal. In a federal system of government, the power shared between the central and state government are known as, that's concurrent powers. Now, a type of government which allows coordinate units to make law, of course, a central, a federal system of government. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. 
The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mark mode, and the practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the videos to people that benefit from it. Bye.